Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel where I tell you tips and tricks on how to travel smarter, where to go, what are the best destinations. Today I want to talk about some issues that travelers face when they're going abroad and kind of how to avoid them or at least get around them with your sanity. Um, traveling may seem pretty glamorous when you look at someone's Instagram page, but in reality, there are lots of things that can go wrong and I could tell you from experience. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about the most common travel problems that you might face when you go abroad and also most importantly figuring out how to solve those problems or how to get around them. There are tons of things that could go wrong on a trip but there are ways to either help mitigate the issues or to help avoid them whether that's preparing a little bit more. Um, so yeah, I want to go over some of those problems with you today and let's get things started. All right, first things first. Obviously, if you're in the US, you know if there's an emergency, you call 911. But obviously that does not apply when you're in another country. So before you go to whatever country you end up going to, do your research and make sure you know the emergency number for that country. It'll come in handy if something happens to go wrong. Something that you kind of don't have that much control over, unless you're late, that is, um, is delayed or canceled flights. Obviously this can throw a wrench into anyone's travel plans and there's most of the time not much you can do about it. Um, but first thing I want to say is uh, stay calm and be reasonable with people that are trying to assist you in rebooking your flights or anything like that. I had an experience when I was traveling to Thailand. It was actually my first ever solo trip and my I had a friend who recommended me to go to Koh Tao. I really wanted to get my petty certification and learn how to scuba dive. And unfortunately, my flight was delayed. And then by the time I got to the airport, you're supposed to take a bus to the ferry and then the ferry will take you to that island. However, the, the ferry that was going to Koh Tao, which was my destination, had left for the day. The last ferry was gone. And so I had two options. I could either get a hotel in this random town in Thailand that I had really no interest in seeing, or I could kind of change my plans, go to Koh Samoy, which is a nearby island, and go there instead. And then from there, figure out whether I want to go to Koh Tao or not. So that I got to Koh Samoy just fine. Everything was working out great. And I ended up staying at that island anyways. Like I was a little bummed so that I didn't get to go do my PADI certification, but all in all, it was a great trip and I got to meet some really cool people and enjoy the beach and go snorkeling and stuff. So all best laid plans, get a wrench thrown in them every once in a while. So it's just about kind of pivoting and trying to make the best of the situation at hand. If you're traveling halfway across the world, they're gonna deal with jet lag, which is never fun. It's just something that is unavoidable and you think that you're doing great and then just suddenly it hits you and you just like have to take a nap. And there's just no real way to go uh, get around it. But I will say something that helps me a lot is working out, doing something active, kind of resets yourself. Just having some coffee just to try to make it to the end of the day. Um, just doing what, whatever you can to stay awake. And my biggest recommendation there is to try to adjust to the city's time zone as much as possible. I know you're gonna wanna take that nap, but just try to avoid it as much as possible. One thing that you also can't really control over is whether the airline loses your baggage, which is just such a pain in the butt. I totally get it. To help avoid like immediate stressors, make sure you have like any glasses or contacts or necessary makeup in your carry-on with you, as well as a change of clothes. So even if your baggage isn't gonna be there until like the next day, you won't be like totally screwed until you get it. You have like your must-haves on you, no matter what. Also, before you leave the airline, be sure you talk to the airline staff and get the game plan of action from them. Are they reaching out to you? Do you have to call them? Are they gonna ship your bag to your hostel or hotel? Or are you gonna have to come back to the airport and pick it up? Make sure you get some verbal confirmation from someone and any necessary info from that. 
The next one is kind of an obvious one and some something that people definitely deal with is the language barrier when you go to another country. And while if you're going on a week vacation, like you don't want to learn a whole new language, but I will say that if you take the time to learn little things like how to talk to a cab driver, how to order food, a little bit actually really goes a long way. And locals usually really appreciate you trying, even if your accent isn't good and it's just you're fumbling over words, like usually people will try to work with you. I would also say Google Translate is a great option or any Translate app really. Um, generally speaking, that will hopefully get you by if you're in a tough situation. We've all experienced it when you have check-in time that's at 3 p.m. but you flew in at like 10 a.m. It's kind of a pain in the butt, like what are you supposed to do with those like spare hours? I would say one thing you can do, I used to work at a hotel and if you call in advance, they will put a note in your um, reservation and they will do their, do their very best to accommodate your request. It's not always gonna be foolproof, but if you're nice to them and you work with them, they'll work with you, generally speaking. Um, I will also say too, if you just even go to the hotel and drop your baggage off, they'll usually store it for you, no problem, no questions asked. And then you can kind of just spend your time exploring, grab lunch somewhere before check-in. All right, next up, if you lose your phone abroad, I mean, this is kind of, very similar to what would happen if you're in the US. I would say just try calling your phone, texting, contact information for a way to get a hold of you, um, turning on find my iPhone or find my device um, to try to find a location, uh, just doing your best to try to track it down and retrace your steps if you think you forgot it at a restaurant or something like that. If you think it was stolen, I would recommend erasing your data um, locking your phone, changing your passwords, just in case if somebody is able to get into your phone, you are like able to protect yourself with that. Um, also, yeah, again, if you think it got stolen, I would uh, report it to the police. Obviously, if you're in a new country, the potential for you getting lost is high. I've definitely gotten lost many times. Um, it's always a little bit better with when you're with someone, so then way you're kind of in it together. But if you are on your own, particularly, I would get an offline maps. Um, so even if you don't have Wi-Fi or service is really bad, you're still able to kind of get back on the right track. Also, depending on where you are, people are going to be really friendly and they're going to want to help you. I was in China and we were we went to some tourist destination. And we weren't lost per se, but like we could not find a cab anywhere. And like, so we were literally walking alongside a highway in the pouring rain and some woman like pulled over and was like, can we, can I help you? Like, can I take you to where you need to go? So it's just an example of people's kindness and willingness to help out. Also, if you happen to lose your passport abroad, this, is my worst nightmare and do your best to avoid this at all costs but it's going to be okay it just takes some time if your passport is a complete goner don't worry the u.s consulate or embassy will be able to help you out but there are a few things that you need to prepare for so just to be clear you do need a new passport before you leave the country and i literally i was I forget where I was traveling, but I remember I was waiting in customs and this person like realized that they had forgotten their passport and they literally were trying to use a copy of their passport to get through. And I was just like, oh my gosh, man, like you need to like immediately go to the US embassy because that is not gonna fly. Even if they happened to let him in, which would never have happened, the next country, you might not know whether they would do the same. So it's just, if that happens, like, abort all plans, you're gonna have to change your flight if your flight is leaving soon, just to be able to get your passport. So yeah, first things first, definitely contact your US embassy or consulate. Give If you are supposed to be leaving soon, give them your travel information. I know that they're gonna try to do their best to help you get, get your passport so you can leave in time, but just 
be warned that you might have to change that flight. There are a few things that you do need to be able to get a new passport. First of all, passport photo. Whenever I traveled, I always just had like three to five of those little passport photos, just extra, just in case something like this happened, because you will need that. Um, also, some other form of identification, whether that's a driver's license, an expired passport, something to prove that you're an American citizen as well, um, whether that's a birth certificate or a photocopy of your passport. So that's why people always recommend when you go on an international trip to make a copy of that passport and make a few copies and store them in different bags so you know that you always have that. You also want a travel itinerary and a police report if you did report it lost or stolen. Again, they'll do their best to try to do it in a timely fashion, but um, just be patient and keep calm. Whether it's food poisoning or getting the flu or something like that, you might get sick when you're traveling, which totally sucks, but there's really nothing that you can do about it. I would say you can prepare by getting travel insurance, so you know that if you do get sick, your hospital bills will be covered, at least partially. Um, you can also register your trip with the Department of State, uh, enroll in their uh, Smart Traveler Enrollment Program. This is basically so they know where you are if you are in an emergency situation, a health scare. They know, they have your information on file. And also your nearest U.S. Embassy or consulate contact them and they will either be able to guide you into finding where like a hospital to go to or even contacting your family members or friends to let them know what's going on. So those are some of the most common travel issues that you might come across. Some of them are more vital than others, um, but I will say just in general, trying to stay calm. If somebody's genuinely trying to help you, don't berate them, be nice, be understanding. I would also say focus on what you can control. When there are those delayed flights or canceled flights, just try to stay calm. If it's delayed, you have plenty of time to look up alternative travel routes. Um, there was one time when I, my flight was delayed for over 24 hours. It was supposed to leave at noon and then it was um, postponed, postponed, postponed until like 11.30 at night and then they canceled it and of course by then all of the nearby hotels were booked full and anything far away, like I, I didn't have a SIM card in this country, I was traveling with a friend that had one and he had since left and then I had already converted all of my currency and so I didn't feel comfortable leaving. Um, and going kind of in a random place to a random hotel. Um, so I ended up sleeping on the floor in the freezing airport, but it all worked out in the end. But that was my uh, 24 hours in the Macau airport. It was brutal, <laughs> don't recommend it. But long story short, in instances like that, the only thing you can really control is how you respond to the situation. Um, I mean, We've all had our moments, but I would just say you always feel better about the situation if you kind of keep your head about you and you kind of treat people kindly and just kind of go with the flow. Travel issues happen all the time and it's just a matter of doing what you can to control the situation, um, look for alter alternative routes if it's possible, and just overall just trying to be as positive as possible. If you're liking this content, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below. If you have any questions, leave a comment as well. I'm happy to give you any tips and tricks for traveling. So these were kind of the top travel issues that you might experience on a trip abroad. I hope this helps you. I hope this helps you get out of a sticky situation or hopefully avoid them as well. Um, please leave a comment below. If you have any questions or concerns, let me know. Thanks for watching.